Thank you, Patriot Nation. Thank you. Tom, it's, it's a lot better reception than we got out in L.A. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thanks so much. That's a, such a warm, warm welcome. I can't tell you how much it means to me to come back here and see the great Patriot, Patriot fans. Thank you. So, um, it was, uh, I tell you, it, this is hard because uh, for you know a couple hours, um, everybody, and rightfully so, everybody has um, said so many things about Tom, great things about him, and it's just kind of being redundant to go on and on about all the, the greatness that uh, he's brought to uh, all of us, you know, all of us, fans, coaches, everybody who's been involved with him. Um, so I'll try to just you know shed a couple of personal. Uh, stories and you know, remarks here, but uh, first of all, I'd say it's, it was a tremendous honor and uh, privilege for me to, you know, draft Tom and to coach him for 20 years. And so, um, you know, as, as we've heard from so many of his teammates, uh, his pursuit of excellence, his work ethic the drive, the competitiveness, um, the unselfishness, the, like everything he brought to the team. It was, it was really a, an honor for me to, to be involved with that and to be able to um, work with him every day and, and learn from it. So um, I know that, you know, we can talk about, you know, a lot of his great plays and honestly we'd be up here all night. I mean, this thing would, you know, we, we could go until the middle of next week, but you know, just a handful of things, and, and the guys that just were up there, uh, you know, the, the 82-yard touchdown to, to Troy Brown in 2003 uh, to beat Miami in overtime, right? I mean, the 59-yard the touchdown in the snow to Deion Branch down the sideline in Chicago. Right here on this field, five touchdown passes in the second quarter against Tennessee. Three to Randy, one on a flea flicker, and two to West in one quarter. The, uh, the seam pass to Rob in Super Bowl 53 to set up the winning touchdown. And, and, we, and we can go on. We can go on and on. But you know, a couple of the plays that I think about that I remember where Tom was like the most excited after the play would be the scramble in Chicago against Erlacher for the first down. The scramble for the touchdown in a snowball against the Raiders. Where, where honest to God, when he spiked the ball, I was afraid he was gonna separate his shoulder. <laughs> but I think, he was a little surprised at some of those plays, but there were, uh, there, those were awesome plays. And, you know, to watch Tom run and, and, you know, pick up those key first downs and touchdowns and all that, like, I mean, he loved that. He really did, he loved that. Um, but, you know, we talk about, you know, we talk about all of Tom's great plays and, and go on and on and on. But, you know, let me just, I'll just say this. The thing about Tom that I think is so impressive, so unbelievably impressive, and what he did for us for, you know, 20 years, 19 years that he played for us, is he avoided bad plays. 
he avoided bad plays. And, and we have a saying, you have a couple of sayings here that um, you know I, I've used with the teams. You know, you can't win until you keep from losing, or more games in the NFL are lost than are won. If you just don't go out there and, and screw it up, you got a pretty good chance, you know, to win. And with Tom, through his decision making, um, preparation, the numbers are just, you know, historical in terms of fewest turnovers, fewest negative runs, fewest offensive penalties. And and so when you eliminate you know, all those plays, um, and you can stay out of long yardage, and you, you can, you know, you can keep the ball going forward, and you can keep managing situations, and then that makes, you know, Tom's excellence on third down and in the red area and in long sustained drives, because there were so very few bad plays, way, way less than, less than any other team in the league, by, by far. And, of all the things uh, that Tom does well, I think the ones that are, the, the thing that's underappreciated, uh, not, not by the coaching staff, and certainly not by me, but you know, sometimes people just don't give him enough credit for how very few bad plays uh, he had at quarterback as a team. And you know, yeah, hell yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, you know, for the quarterback who, who handles the ball literally on every single play, I mean, other than a, a direct snap to Kevin Falk or, you know, uh, James White, or, but he literally handles the ball on every play. So every play goes through, went through Tom, and there were just so few bad runs, sacks, penalties, turnovers that the team was never really put in, in very many bad positions. And, and I think that's one of the, the, of all Tom's great qualities, that's one of the greatest, is he always protected the team, did the best thing for the team, and kept the team out of bad situations. And that, that really helps everybody else. Now, the one bad decision that Tom did make <laughs> that I personally saw was not on the football field, but was on the golf course. And Bill Paraki, the, the CEO of Pebble Beach, invited, uh, invited me to play in the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. Um, and so I played with Tom, so we we're enforcing together. And we're on the sixth hole. And the sixth hole is a long par five, down a hill, up the hill. The Pacific Ocean's on the right, it's a big cliff. And um, so, you know, it's a typical Pebble Beach day. Overcast, cloudy, light rain, mist. You know, it's not typical. And Tom, now again, pro man, keep in mind, you have a pro. So when you hit a bad shot, and I hit a lot of them, you just pick the ball up and play the pro's ball. That's what you got a pro for. So you don't worry about double bogeys, you don't worry about triple bogeys, you don't worry about lost balls. It's the pro's job to make a par. So Tom hits the drive, hits his second shot, and, and the ball's going over to the right, over to the cliff, which goes into the Atlantic o or into the Pacific Ocean, and the ball rolls out of sight. And so sort of like, well, you know, it looks like this one rolled into the ocean. And as we walk up there, you don't see the ball. And we get to the edge and look over the cliff, and there's the ball on a on a ledge over the cliff. And the cliff now is like 250 feet down to the Pacific Ocean, rocks, and the waves are smashing on the rocks. And I look at Tom and I look at the ocean, and I'm thinking about our starting quarterback, and I'm thinking about our season. And Tom's got that that determined, focused, laser-focused Tom Brady look. We all know what that is. And he takes the club and walks down onto this ledge. He's got one foot on the side, one foot on the grass. It's 250 feet down to the rocks and pitches it up onto the fairway. And I'm, I can see my, you know, 
I, I can see our whole season, you know, just in my eyes. And, and then he needs the caddy to help him launch back up onto the fairway. I mean, he's like down there, like three or four feet. He, I'm like, Tom, did you think about maybe just like take an unplayable eye on that one? You know. But he, Tom's makes, made very few bad decisions, uh, you know, on and off the field. I mean, he was a model for consistency, for dependability, uh, and for always, you know, doing the right thing. It was such a great example, you know, for all of us. So, um, the, You know, the opportunity I had to meet with Tom, you know, at least twice a week, you know, we met a little bit more than that earlier in his career, but, you know, twice a week I met with Tom. Those were, you know, some of the most, some of the best days I had as a, as a coach in my entire career. Um, because I learned so much, um, you know, I saw the game through his eyes, which as we all can imagine is, you know, phenomenal. Um, and, and he taught me so much about how he saw the game you know, I try to teach him how I saw the game as a coach, but not as a quarterback. And he taught me how he saw the game as a quarterback, you know, not as a coach. And it was, I mean, those were, were just some of the very best, very best meetings, very best times, of, honestly, in my coaching career. And, yeah, thank you. And, and through those meetings and, and the preparation uh, that, that we had, Tom had, you know, the things that really stood out were how much he, he cared and how much he prepared. And, you know, several of the guys have talked about his preparation. It's really legendary, you know, all week. And, you know, and, and those meetings were, were very challenging for me because I knew he'd probably seen, you know, 10, maybe 15 games of the opponent that we were gonna play. And you know, I wanted to make sure that I was as well prepared as he was. And, and that was uh, honestly a high bar. So, um, but Tom's, his caring and his preparation were just, you know, exceptional. I can't, can't really put into words like how, how much he did uh, and how extraordinary it was from Monday to, well, Sunday after the game, watching film on the way back from the team that we played on away games to Saturday night meetings to Sunday morning meetings. I mean, he, his, his determination and relentless pursuit of excellence was just, you know, beyond, you know, beyond anything that, you know, I've seen from, you know, any other player at that position. And, and I just want to, just want to take a second to, to mention you know, the coaches that, you know, were most directly involved with Tom. So, you know, Ernie Adams uh, for 20 years. Um, Josh McDaniels. Charlie Weiss. and the new head coach of the Boston College, Billy O'Brien. And, and those guys, I mean, did such a great job of coaching and working with Tom, and particularly in, in you know, seeing Tom develop and, and looking at his skills and trying to tailor the offense to all the things that he did well and, and did best and that he was most comfortable with. Uh, those guys put in a, a lot of time and a lot of work to, you know, to make that happen. And so when we, when we practiced, and, and it, was, it was hard because the offense was good, there was a lot of good players, talked about a lot of those, you know, the receivers and all that. But the offensive line, you know, which was run by Dante for the majority of that time, He's also in the Patriots Hall of Fame. You know, Dante.
Devontae is just like all the other offensive linemen. As long as they don't call holding on him, he's happy. But no, Dante and his guys took, took really good care of Tom and, and the communication that was necessary between the quarterback and the offensive line, uh, you know, to handle uh, the different things that, you know, we saw on a weekly basis was just, you know, exemplary in the preparation that, uh, you know, that Dante did with his guys, the way his guys protected Brady were, you know, was exceptional. And then that led to, you know, highly, highly competitive practices. And when you think about the defensive players that, that worked against Tom, and I'm talking about the starters that were out there, and they took a lot of reps against, against our first team offense and against Brady. So, you know, Rodney Harrison, who, who deserves to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I, I hope, really hope he gets there. You know, Brable and Brewski, Seymour, Malloy, Talib, McGinnis, Wilford, Seau, and then you know more recently like Chung, McCordy, Ninkovich, and last but not least Hightower. Without, without Hightower, I don't know how a couple of those Super Bowls would have turned out, all right? But, I can tell you as a, as a coach who spent most of his career on defense, the number of times that I walked off the field with our other defensive coaches, and we looked at each other, and, and we were kind of, you know, kind of shaking our heads a little bit like, are we that bad on defense? Like, we cannot stop these guys. Like, are we that bad? And then you realize over time how good Tom and the offensive unit was and how competitive it was. And we can argue back and forth about who got the better or who in practice, the offensive defense. But I can tell you, those practice squad players and some of the, the scout team players, they competed so hard to break up a pass from Tom Brady, to intercept a pass from Tom Brady, and it made everybody better. And it made everybody better. So I just want to just take a second to say that Tom's competitiveness rubbed off. The defensive competitiveness made Tom better. Tom made the defense better. The scout team made the offense better and the competitive practices that we had and I'll just you know they're always indelibly etched in my mind is one of the big reasons why those six banners are flying up there. So you know in in conclusion just Tom want to say thanks on behalf of all the players, all the coaches, all the staff, all the people, the hundreds of people that are here, and the thousands of fans that are here. Thank you, and thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all you've done for me. And thank you for the example and model that you've been for all of us on a daily basis for 20 years.